Hello again and welcome to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With and joining us again is Dr. Derek Wenmuth. So Derek, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, kia ora, uh, Michael. Yes, um, so I'm Derek Wenmuth. I'm uh, in New Zealand. I've got a background as an educator right through the whole education system and I'm currently uh, doing some work with our Ministry of Education around the future of uh, online and distance learning and right now that's very applicable in the work that I'm doing helping through the COVID-19 response. Okay now Derek this school year regardless if we're a September through June system or like you guys a January through December system the school year is being disrupted in some way right now um, some kids are learning more than others some kids have access to learning more than others what can school leaders be thinking about right now to help prepare for when things get back to somewhat normal to help adjust and accommodate for these things? Yeah, so it's a really good question, Michael, and one I've thought about a lot lately in the work I'm doing with schools because I was reading a, a, an article this morning that triggered it for me, and it said um, one of the marks of good leadership is to ask why. And there's a lot of that conversation in education circles at the moment. And before this, we were doing, you know, what is the why? That, back to that, what is it that drives us, motivates us? What's the purpose behind what we're doing and so forth? And I think that's the question we need to be asking uh, as leaders um, and to be prompting our staff and our community to come back to. Uh, because here in New Zealand, a lot of those conversations are being had and some really interesting outcomes saying, oh, well, we always thought that school was about, you know, making sure kids met certain standards and they had to be in attendance and if they didn't you know their seat time mattered and if they didn't have that they'd be missing out on instruction but actually what I've been finding is you know much richer experiences as they connect with each other and and explore the things that are pa they're passionate about and so forth now all of those conversations I think um, need to be encouraged they need to be being had and we need to be uh, teasing from them the things that we believe are going to be supporting our system moving forward, the things we don't want to let go, really, because having lived through the Christchurch earthquakes just a few years ago, one of the, the biggest temptations, and in fact, it's, it's almost a, uh, a natural cycle, is that whilst we talk about returning to normal, actually, that is what's in our minds. We just, our target is open up the schools again, as soon as those classroom doors open and we're able to take kids back and sit in front of the chalkboard or whatever, we'll just be, our, our bias will be to carry on as we always did. Now, you, you mentioned the Christchurch earthquakes and I remember being down there at that time as the schools closed and trying to come up with creative solutions. And um, one of the things we know about pandemics and natural disasters in general, I think, is that you know, they're not stopping anytime soon. There's likely going to be a second wave of this particular one. What can school leaders start to do to prepare now for the next time the system has a shock like this so that it's it's less of a scramble to get things in place and that uh, things the transition is a little more seamless? Yeah, I think for me, one of the big lessons out of both of the occasions, the earthquake and this one, is as leaders, we really need to take seriously what it means to, by the, the concept of know your kids. Um, we talk about a learner-centered paradigm, and yet so much uh, of what we do is still based around what happens in school and for school. And you can see that at a, at a, at a number of levels. You even think about one-to-one -one programs with technology. Uh, they, it's about, for many schools, it's about what they provide and what they uh, contribute and what they make available rather than thinking about how do the kids use this, where do they use it, what do they use it for and how might that support their learning and so many schools uh, after the, the closures for example, I'm just picking on this one example of, uh, of the technology use but it becomes important here, many schools would lock all their devices up at the end of the day and the kids would go home and so after the lockdown you find that kids are going home and the devices that would enable them to connect and be a, a participate are locked down at school. And that's just, as I say, one example there. In New Zealand, and I'm sure it happened in, in the States as well, the other thing we found was we just didn't have the information that we needed to be able to respond in terms of knowing who our kids were, how many were in the family, 
how, how many devices were available to them? What was the level of their connectivity? What was the level of support? Because it's very different if you're in a home uh, where both of your parents were essential workers, you couldn't just automatically rely on parents being there to support the learning. And so, so there are many, many questions that, in, that are needed so that we don't just fall back into institutionally based assumptions about our learners like we do when we're comfortable in our classrooms. So for me, it's actually know your learners, their context, their families, their everything about them. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Derek. This has been another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today it's been with Derek Wenmuth. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Thank uh you. -huh.